Hello and welcome to History Bite, to our Cold War series. Today we're talking about the USSR's creation of Cominform and Comic-Con, two organisations that would strengthen the USSR's hold over Eastern Europe and would create a bigger rift between them and the Western powers. Between 1947 and 1948, the USA had brought in two measures, in the form of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan. The Truman Doctrine had been a stand against the spread of communism, with the USA pledging to contain the spread of communism by any means necessary, while the Marshall Plan had promised $13 billion to European countries, which was intended to help their recovery by building up their economies. Both measures had ended up helping the countries of Europe that had applied for help but also served to drive a wedge deeper between the USA and the USSR. Stalin had viewed the Marshall Plan in particular with suspicion and had forbade any of the Soviet-influenced countries in Eastern Europe from applying. Marshall aid was a challenge to Stalin, and so Stalin needed to answer the challenge in his own way. So what did Stalin do? Well, first of all, he set about creating a new organisation that would help him unify and coordinate all of the communist countries. And so it was on the 22nd of September 1947 that Cominform was born. Cominform stands for the Communist Information Bureau. It was Stalin's new political organisation, which included the Soviet Union Communist Party and the Communist Parties of the Satellite States of Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Poland, Romania and the Communist Parties of France and Italy. However, in France and Italy, the Communist parties didn't run the country like they did in Eastern Europe. But there was a bit of tension in Cominform. At first, in Yugoslavia, Marshal Tito's support for Cominform was so strong that Stalin had agreed that Belgrade, the capital of Yugoslavia, would be the official headquarters of Cominform. However, by the end of 1948, Tito had disagreed with Stalin's interpretation of communism and wanted to go his own way. So Yugoslavia was eventually excluded from Cominform and the headquarters moved to Bucharest in Romania. So what did Cominform actually do? Cominform was Stalin's way of uniforming the efforts of multiple communist political parties across Europe. But when I say unify, what I really mean is that as the largest communist state, the USSR would use Cominform to tell the other communist countries what to do. And it's true. Stalin wanted to ensure that the new communist countries in Eastern Europe not only followed communist ideas closely, but looked to Moscow for instructions. As part of Cominform, Eastern European satellite states were encouraged only to trade with other Cominform members and to cut off contact with non-Cominform countries. In essence, Stalin had now found an answer to President Truman's challenge in the form of the Truman Doctrine. In fact, at Cominform's first meeting, the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan was condemned and the Americans were discussed as being no better than the Nazis. It was a strong statement indeed. So now we actually have a divide. The USA is going to look after the interest and support Western Europe. The USSR is going to look after the interest and support Eastern Europe. But Stalin wasn't done there. He still wanted to keep any temptation of Western influence out of Eastern Europe. He had already banned communist states from applying for martial aid but he also knew that financially, Eastern Europe would need more support. So to stop the Eastern European countries from going behind his back to the West for help, on the 25th of January 1949, he created a new organisation, and this was called Comic-Con. And no, it's not this Comic-Con, because this Comic-Con is awesome. It was this Comic-Con, and it stands for the Council of Mutual Economic Assistance. Its goal was to provide aid to communist countries along communist guidelines. Obviously, the Soviet Union were a member of Comic-Con, but so were Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland, Romania and East Germany. Albania was eventually added in 1950. So here was Stalin's big answer to the Marshall Plan. Financial support for communist Eastern European countries. And in a very Stalin-esque style, each of the member states was given a five-year plan. All the industry was nationalised and all agriculture collectivised just as Russia had done efficiently but brutally in the 1930s. As part of membership of Comic-Con, countries were not allowed to trade with the West. Instead, all trade had to go through the Soviet Union. 
This had a huge benefit for the Soviets in terms of profits. However, it had downsides because when new projects were launched in the satellite states, they were denied the latest innovations and technology that was developing in the West because they could only supply themselves with Soviet goods, which were often outdated. This is sometimes a problem with planned economies, when the emphasis of production is all on what the state needs, not what the people necessarily want. This is very different from the West, which had free market economies based on the production of needs, but also commercial wants of the people. This would be something that would come back to bite the Soviets as the decades progressed. But for now, Stalin's reaction to the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan was the creation of Comin Form and Comic Con. But what effect did this have on relations with the West? As you can imagine, this created a much bigger divide. America had its supporters and its influence over Western Europe, and the USSR now had its supporters and its influence over Eastern Europe. There was to be no mixing, no interacting, no trading. It was East and it was West. And there was now the increased tension and mistrust building up even further between the USA and the USSR. The biggest direct consequence now was that Europe was divided economically between the East and the West, but it wouldn't be long before Europe was divided again militarily. And this would happen in 1949 with the creation of NATO on the West side, and in 1955 with the creation of the Warsaw Pact on the East side. These are things that will be covered in another video. So for now, tensions in Europe were rising further, and the next few years promised to bring the world deeper into the Cold War. If you enjoyed this video and would like to find out more about history, why not subscribe to our channel, or follow us on Twitter or Facebook.